Well, welcome again. It's Thursday, the 30th of December. Still, it's in the evening. Now, I want to do a bit of a sort of orientation of what's going on in the pandemic, really, because I really believe we are in the end stage of it now. Omicron, I think we'll finish this pandemic off or at least change it from being a pandemic to being a, an endemic. The question is what's going to happen over the next few weeks as basically everyone is going to be infected with Omicron. Now, let's just look at some orientation slides uh, from the various countries, then the US, then South Africa, and then the UK, which I think is what we really need to follow at the moment to, to get good indications of what's going on. Now, here, here we have the new daily confirmed cases. Now, we've got India and Japan at the bottom there. Then Canada... Well, the Omicron's certainly on the rise there, isn't it? The United States and Italy, likewise. Greece and Portugal. Spain, France, United Kingdom, Ireland, uh, Denmark. And of course, the United Kingdom and Ireland and Denmark are all highly vaccinated countries. And yet we're getting many uh, cases. Now, how is that transposing into illness? So let's look at the number of hospital patients. Now, we are starting to see an increase. There's a definite trend to increase, but we'll look at, we'll see this is actually quite complicated. And one thing that's slightly concerning me at the moment is uh, countries like the United States and France that use mostly messenger RNA uh, vaccines, um, whereas the United Kingdom use some um, adenovirus vector vaccines. I'm just wondering if that's made a difference because the only adenovirus vector vaccine used in the United States, of course, was the Janssen, Johnson & Johnson, which hasn't been used that much. Uh, more to come on that shortly, I would think. But let, let's just carry on with this orientation now. You can see the hospitals there. So Canada, Portugal, Ireland, Denmark, United Kingdom, Spain, Italy, United States, France. So definite increases in some areas, according to our world in data. Uh, now, these are intensive care units. Now, here we see the United Kingdom, Canada, Denmark, Portugal, relatively low numbers. Uh, Italy a bit higher. Ireland, despite having lower number of patients in hospital, um, uh, they had quite a lot of intensive care, um, relatively speaking to the United Kingdom, for example. Spain. France and uh, the United States in terms of patients in intensive care. So um, that is a little more concerning. It does mean that there's probably a bit to go on this pandemic. Now, having looked at that, I just want to look at the South African data again now. This is the data from South Africa we keep a close eye on, of course, on this channel. Because it does tell us uh, quite a lot. And here we see that the... Um, Hospital cases have actually been going down, which is uh, pretty good news. And here we see the patients actually in hospital um, up slightly on yesterday, but still only 1,400 and, uh, 1,417 patients on oxygen. So month on month, we see that the hospitalization is going down. I know this data is incomplete yet, but, but we, we, the numbers are down Um so nine, 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 just over 9,000 today, but only 1,400 on oxygen, which is, is good. Um, but it's just been occurring to me that um, in South Africa, they uh, had a lot of natural immunity and um, they used a fair bit of uh, Johnson & Johnson vaccine as well. Although they did use Pfizer and we've seen in the last report that it did uh, work uh, equally well with T-cells. So um, get the impression that... Um, this is still incomplete. We haven't worked everything out yet. Now, I want to look at the United States now. A bit of a um, data data splurge from the, from the states here. Now, this is um, the, the, these are the cases in the states, and now we see that there's very high numbers of cases for these last two days, as we've seen. Uh, very high numbers indeed. And this is the four hundred thousand cases a day line. So, no question that the Omicron surge is well. Uh, underway in the United States. But hospitalizations, well, they are going up a bit, aren't they? So hospitalizations are increasing slightly in, in the United States, as we've seen. It did look a lot on the other graph, but if we compare that the increase that we see there on this graph relative to what it has been, that helps to put it in, uh, in some sort of uh, context. And that was the peak of the 
alpha wave there and that was the, the delta wave there. So always good to have that sort of context. Now this is the deaths in the United States and we see that they are actually going down or more or less level, which is, is uh, good, but still at a fairly high, high level, it has to be said, compared to other countries. Now this is actually from Colorado, this. Now what we've got here is, uh, this is the original uh, virus here. And then this is the um, alpha variant. Then this is the delta variant. And then the Omicron variant is here at the end. So we can see that the Omicron variant basically has come from pretty well a blue sky over what, it's just a touch there. So just over four weeks and it's become the dominant variant by far. And we notice that the delta variant bar has gone down dramatically. So this is clear confirmation that in Colorado, the Omicron is replacing the Delta. And this is really good news because even though hospitalizations go up in the short term because of the mass of cases, we know that the Omicron is making people less sick than the, uh, the Delta. So just look at the way that's been replaced there in Colorado as the Omicron now becomes the dominant variant, pushing aside the Delta. Now this is um, this is from uh, oh this is California this data here, so from December the thirteenth to uh, December the nineteenth, unvaccinated people were five five point two times more likely to get COVID than fully vaccinated people. So the, 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 these are the cases. So these are cases in the unvaccinated. These are cases in the vaccinated. So we can see in both groups. Even in the vaccinated, there's still a sharp increase in cases, but a sharper increase in cases in the unvaccinated. But how's that transposing through to hospitalizations in California is the question. Well, in the unvaccinated, hospitalizations are going down and in the vaccinated, hospitalizations are going down in California, which is good news. Consistent, it has to be said, with the onset of the Omicron Let's hope. I think it could be the Omicron that's responsible for the reduction in hospitalizations. But the trouble is, there's going to be so much Omicron in the next few weeks. Is that going to change things significantly? It is a real possibility, I'm afraid, just due to the sheer uh, volume of cases, the sheer number of cases of Omicron. Uh, these are the deaths in California. And again, uh, in the vaccinated, they remain low. And in the unvaccinated, they're going down, which is again, is good news and could well be an Omicron effect. Now, this is the cases in Florida. Just a bit of a tour of the states here. <laughs> we can't do them all, obviously. The case has gone up dramatically, uh, obviously. But this is the positivity, and we see it's up to 13.8% on the 17th of December, and we know it'll be higher than that now. In other words, for every 100 people that were tested, 13.8 of them came back positive. High positivity rates indicating very high levels of community prevalence and community transmission. As we know, Delta is just running rampant through the states. So that's, uh, that shows that there quite, uh, quite clearly. What else have we got there? Uh, th th this is Florida cases plus... Uh, Plus, plus vaccination. So, so th th this is the weekly. So, this is the case count here in Florida. So, we see it's gone up dramatically, and uh, we can see that there. So, this is the increase. This line here is the increase in cases in Florida, and this is against this background of good levels of vaccination. So, the Omicron cases, as we see there, are breaking through the vaccination. Uh, this is New York. This shows the dramatic increase in cases. And this has actually been advised. It, it was 30.9% on the 18th of December there for uh, Omicron, but we now know it's more than that. Um, at least I think that's the way this data is working. But we certainly see the sharp increase in cases there. Um, so, yeah, again, mass, massive, massive surge. So it's reasonable to assume that as the case is going up so dramatically there that this was Omicron here, just not being well detected. And that's kind of borne out by this more uh, recent graphic, which shows the data from the 18th and the 25th of December, where we see the um, Omicron in New York is 80, 88.4% of cases now. 
So again, we clearly see that the Omicron has become dominant and we also see that it is displacing the Delta down to 11.5% now. So that's uh, that's good news. So so that's just a bit of um, a bit of orientation from the States that I thought was useful because we haven't done a lot of uh, specific um, information on that recently. Now, here's all the all the all the references for all these things are all here. Uh, I'll put these all in the description so you can you can click away to your <laughs> to your heart's content in those. Now, next, I want to look at um, the uh, UK data. So here we have the UK data I wanted to look at. <clears throat> now, this this is the increase in Omicron in the uh, United Kingdom that we've um, become familiar with. And we see that the latest estimate, the data for the 27th, which is just released today on the 30th, 93.8% uh, of cases are Omicron displacing the Delta. The Delta is getting less. So although there's a massive increase in cases, the chances of any one individual getting sick are less. But because there's so many cases, I mean, if you're in the UK now or in the States, you'll know so many people that have got this now. This is just, just absolutely everywhere. This is the problem. We're getting it all of a sudden. So that's the cases in the UK overall. Now, this is London, which is kind of leading the way. So 95.7% uh, of cases are now Omicron in London. But we see now that the Delta has been virtually displaced. Very, very good news. Very little Delta now in London. Uh, nearly all um, Omicron variant. Latest from the Office of National Statistics. So this is data up to um, when is this data up to? About a week ago, I think it was really it was it was released on the yeah up to about the twenty first there. So it actually released on the thirtieth, just released today. So uh, up to then, up to the twenty first, sixteenth no sixteenth of December. I think this data is up to the twenty first. Yeah, it is up to the twenty. This data is up to the twenty first. Sorry. So uh, infections uh, increased, as we know. Hospital admissions remain similar, although that has changed a little bit, as we'll see in a minute. Uh, deaths went down. Um, adults, quite a lot of adults, 45% of adults have had a booster dose. Uh, over 9 out of 10 adults have got antibodies, 95%. And totally distancing by this measure remained at, uh, at 40. So that was the trend as of the 21st. Now, this is the uh, sort of uh, death rate here. Now, the, uh, the, blue, the blue line, of course, is the deaths that are associated with COVID-19. Uh, the black line here is what we would expect for the time of year. So we see that there is uh, a bit of an excess in deaths for the time of year at the moment. Uh, although not all attributable to COVID by any means. And of course, uh, m most of these COVID cases we still have here, I, I still believe, are, are Delta. So this is uh, UK cases, and again we see this dramatic increase over the last couple of days. Very high increase in UK cases. Putting numbers on that, 30th of December, 190,000 basically new cases. Very high increase. This is UK hospital patients, so it has gone up somewhat. Some increase in UK hospital patients as of the 30th of December. Um, and put numbers on that, there's now uh, nearly 12,000 people in hospital. So it is a fair increase, but we're not entirely sure why this is, because as I'm going to show you in a minute, the actual number of Omicron patients we know in hospital are, are 815. And we know patients with Omicron because the, the PCR test shows the, the S gene dropout, which of course the Omicron variant doesn't have this particular S gene. Um, so... It's not entirely clear why this is. Let, 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 let me just show you that. I mean, let, we're going to look at this in a minute, but this is the figure here. Uh, currently, as, as of the 30th, 815 patients with Omicron in hospital. And yet we see this much larger number here um, of patients in hospital altogether. So, and it's increased. And it's increased at the same time as the Omicron, but yet... They don't seem to be Omicron cases, so there's there's an unfit that we don't fully understand this at the moment. This hasn't uh, this doesn't quite 
hang together at the moment, but we, we can certainly say that there is an increase in the number of patients uh, in, in hospital. Quite a lot uh, getting on for 12,000. Now, this is the number of patients on ventilators, and we see this has not gone up. So the sickest patients on ventilators are not increasing. So we're not getting the sick people we had, as we saw on yesterday's report. And the mechanically ventilated beds there, not necessarily people who ventilated, but people in beds uh, where their mechanical ventilation is available, that is uh, relatively constant at um, 800, uh, 868. And just remind us of the trend there. So we see, it's, if anything, it's going down slightly. In fact, it is, it is going down slightly. It's certainly not going up. So hospital admission is going up, but patients on ventilators not. Uh, now, this data here is hospital patients in London, I think. Is this London? Yeah, th 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 this is London. So um, so what we see here is um, April 2020, uh, the, the alpha wave, uh, the alpha peak last winter, and the number of cases are going up in London. And we'll look at reasons, other reasons why this might be in London at the moment from new data from Office for National Statistics. I know you kind of got to wait for a bit for that, but it's a bit it's a bit complicated to try and make sense of all this. Uh, so um, th 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 these are um, patients in hospital with uh, COVID at the moment in London, uh, 3,477. Now, the big problem really in London, um, it's not so much the amount of patients. Th th these can be coped with. Now, it's bad because it's displacing other treatments. That's terrible. Um, but these numbers can be covered. But there's just so many staff off sick at the moment. This is the problem. So many people are having to self-isolate. So I think the government will be reducing the isolation time pretty soon. And these are patients in intensive care in London. So there is a slight increase in London. Slight increase in intensive care patients in London. And to put numbers on that, uh, that's uh, 232 patients in London uh, in intensive care at the moment so that was a bit of a a data a data splurge there but uh, <laughs> there you go because it's just trying to trying to make sense of, of what's going on at the moment i still think we're in the last few weeks but the hospital patients are going up but they're not the sickest and they're not staying in hospital for as long so i still think this is probably fairly good news now um as we said that was the number of people uh in intensive care in London. And I'm just going to put my other light on. There we go. Sometimes I forget to put my second light on. And if you've only got light on one side of the face, you look like the Phantom of the Opera. So it's a bit, I look better now. That, that's good. Well, as good as I get. Now, um, let, let's get on to this other bit that was really important here. At 30th of December. Um, so Omicron patients. And again, we should better diagnose these from, from the PCR. So... There's only another 49 Omicron patients admitted to hospital in the last 24 hours. 98 in the 24 hours before that. 216 in the 24 hours before that. So that's only giving us 815 patients in hospital with confirmed COVID in the UK. And yet, as we said, uh, this is the amount of patients in hospital with, with COVID in the UK. So of those, we only know for sure that 815 have got Omicron. Now, if this is the case, this will mean that the Omicron patients are going to start displacing the Delta patients, one would hope, as the Delta patients are discharged. Um, we need to know more on this, but there's absolutely no reason why all the patients in hospital, or all patients in hospital, of course, are tested. And uh, we, know, we know that these patients here have either had genomic testing or they've got this S gene, uh, S -gene, S -gene dropout, so um, it looks like there's a lot of none Omicron patients being admitted to hospital. Now, I'm hoping to make a bit more sense of this shortly, but that's, 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 that, that seems to be the story so far. Omicron deaths, again, specific Omicron deaths increased by one in the last 24 hours, four in the 24 hours before that, 10 in the 24 hours before that, making a confirmed total of 54 known Omicron deaths. And again, compared to the total number of deaths, this is pretty good. Uh, now, just a bit of Office for National Statistics data. 
Uh, England, so this was, uh, this was on the 23rd of December. England, uh, it had gone up, so 1 in 45. So oh, 1.2 million people were infected in England, 1 in 45. Wales, 54,000 people infected, 1 in 55. Northern Ireland, 37,800 infected, <coughs> 1 in 50. Scotland, 76,200 people infected, 1 in 70. Now, the next thing is a bit strange. Third dose booster vaccine, lowest amongst people with various ethnicities in the UK. Now, this really, I do find quite mystifying as to why this is the case. But these are the figures directly from the Office for National Statistics. And I've expressed them in the terms that the Office for National Statistics uses. So as of the 24th of December, adults aged 50 and over in England with three vaccines who had had a booster dose, 74.7%. Uh, People who describe themselves as Pakistani origin, way lower, 42.2%. People who describe themselves as Black Caribbean, 44.4%. People who describe themselves as Black African, 45.4%. Now, there is a higher prevalence of uh, at least these ethnicities in London. Uh, compared to, say, Cumbria or Norfolk or Somerset or other parts of the country. So, so my, my question is, are these high, uh, relatively high uh, intensive care numbers or the higher intensive care, um, not so much intensive care numbers, but hospital numbers, these higher hospital numbers in London here, uh, due to the low levels of vaccination in these ethnicities, more of whom live in London? And of course, the darker the coloured skin, the less vitamin D is going to be produced. So you have to wonder if that's another factor as well. But why, why on earth people that self-describe from these ethnicities should have such lower vaccine levels than the population as a whole? And bear in mind, these people make up a, a fair chunk of the overall population, th these ethnic groupings. Uh, is a complete mystery to me. Why, why, why would ethnicity make a difference to propensity to take a booster dose? Tell me, I, I really don't know. Um, especially, especially if you're in one of those ethnicities and haven't been vaccinated, tell me why not, because I don't understand the difference. We get the same information, we live in the same culture, and I don't get it. Occupations with the lowest coverage. Uh, elemental tra ele elementary trades and related occupations have only had 37% of those have been vaccinated. Now, th th this is an Office for National Statistics term, e e e elementary trades. It's, I mean, they've just got to try and classify people in some way. Th th these are people that work in trades where you don't need a lot of um, um, sort of higher order education to work in them, is, is what they mean. Um so they, 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 they've had way less boosters and 14.5% of people that work in this occupation have had no vaccines at all. What's that about? They've not had, they haven't been vaccinated. They haven't even had one dose. And in construction, it's not much better. So skilled construction and building trades. Again, um, only 39.8% have been vaccinated and 12 percent sorry I've, I've had a booster dose and 12 percent have had no vaccines at all what's that about what, 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 why should why, why should the occupation that people work in influence so dramatically uh, the, the amount of vaccines that they uh, that they have received very, very strange anyway we've covered a lot of data in today's video i feel better getting that out of the way because i just uh I just felt we had to express it. So I still, I'm still of the opinion that, of course, Omicron is causing less severe disease than Delta. But everyone's getting Omicron all at the same time. So that is having consequences. How that's going to transpose into different amounts of people getting ill and hospitalised in terms of their vaccination history is, is not as clear as I'd like it to be yet. But the early data from South Africa is showing that the Pfizer and the Johnson & Johnson and the natural immunity all generate a good T-cell response, as you saw in the last video. So there we go. A um, few weeks still to go. A few weeks still to go. 
Um, but in a few weeks' time, um, for better or for worse, pretty well all of us are going to have been exposed to Omicron. I think uh, it's going to be for better, but there could be some uh, rough times ahead. And the UK government, and it's only right as a precaution of reopen some of the Nightingale hubs as, as overflow. There's no one to work in them, of course, but they've opened the uh, the facilities. Um, I suppose we could find some people to work in them. Maybe old retired uh, healthcare professionals, for example. But uh, but there you go. Um, <laughs> quite a lot to keep, to keep thinking about. So it's going to be interesting for a little while, and, and then I think we can all go back to normal life fairly soon now. But not quite yet. Thank you for watching.